won't go through a lot because we have a long history. Uh, but you know, just to give you a brief history, uh, the band started, you know, many years ago. Uh, many know the band got notable notarized when Dr. Isaac Griggs took over in 1969. Uh, that's when our fabulous dancing dolls actually started as well. So, uh, you know, a lot of people know the Fabulous Dancer Dolls just like they know the Human Jukebox. So the uh, Human Jukebox has been around for roughly a, a good while. Uh, and over the years, the band has played in three presidential inauguration parades, seven Super Bowls, four Sugar Bowls. Uh, we, present, we just played in the uh, 2020 Rose Parade, but we played also in 1980, also in the uh, Rose Parade. And we were the first band ever to play for the reigning champion Los Angeles Lakers halftime show. Um, our band consists of about 250 students. Uh, we march 192 on the field. Uh, we do have music majors in the program. They do have to be in the uh, band program. We don't have that um, honor and privilege not to let them march. <laughs> but both semesters, uh, you know, we do uh, marching band in the fall and we have different ensembles that we have in our spring semester, which consists of our wind ensemble, symphonic band. Uh, we do have uh, a brass choir, saxophone ensemble, as well as we have a percussion ensemble as well. And, you know, we have different ensembles that we have throughout the music department as well uh, that we are part of. So uh, Southern University Band, like I said, you know, we're always doing big things. Uh, you know, we have done some videos uh, previously uh, prior to 2020. And we also did some videos uh, with Lizzo, as everyone know, uh, it dropped in it pretty huge. Um, it was a big deal, uh, but we enjoyed it. Uh, we always having something that's coming up uh, that, you know, put us out there to keep these students busy. And and these are some elite students, I mean, that we have in this program. Uh, you know, they, they have a lot that they have to do. Uh, they don't, we don't just go to the football games. You know, we have all kind of competitions we are part of. Uh, we do different things that we have, uh, like videos. We do uh, playing for different polit politicians and different things that we have in the city. So uh, we try to give back as much as we can, but we definitely enjoy what we do. Uh, we love to beat the human jukebox. They always say you stick a quart in it and they'll play anything. And that's, <laughs> what we, that's what we thrive ourselves on, you guys. We really, uh, we really look forward to uh, making music and, and definitely building musicians. So uh, we are glad to be here and I hope everyone enjoy what we have to offer and the best is still yet to come. Absolutely. Thank you so much, my friend, for sharing with us. And uh, look, let's get started. Let's get these student leaders in here. COVID-19, as Dr. Plack has said, has really hit everybody uh, by surprise in so many different ways. So many things are different, uh, no matter who you are and where you are and what type of program you have. Uh, COVID-19 has affected all of us. And we know this, that what has helped in the music world more than anything it's our student leaders. It's the men and women who are on this screen tonight and also those that are listening in and maybe listening later who serve in some type of student leadership role. I want to start with my friend Sarah uh, from Florida State. I just want to know, what have you learned about yourself leading your peers during a time like this? What have you learned about yourself? Or what are some of the strengths that maybe you didn't even know about until uh, you got put in this uh, COVID-19 situation and you started to lead? Sarah, come on, join the conversation. Tell me what you learned about yourself. So I definitely learned to lean on my peers, lean on my fellow student leaders, and just we're not going to get through this without each other. And there's so many new things and there's so many things that people haven't done before. And we're the first 2020 COVID band and we have a lot of firsts that we all get to do together. Absolutely. And I love how you say it, Sarah, you got to learn how to lean on each other, right? I'm coming to my friend, uh, D. Amber, same question. What have you learned about yourself? So many things have changed. This is not a, a normal year, if I can use that term. What have you learned about yourself, D. Uh, D Amber? Oh, man. I mean, same as Sarah, you know, we had to learn how to lean on each other. We had to learn how to really adjust to this new norm. So it's just honestly, it's been it's been a journey for sure. And we all know that we, we're going to make it together. I mean, we've been making it together. We're going to do it together. We're going to always, you know, strive through. <laughs> 
I love that. And that's that family concept that happens in band, whether you're in middle school, high school, college, you know what it's like to rely on each other, to depend on each other. Uh, I marched sousaphone, right, in the band. And so don't judge a book by its cover. I'm skinny, 130 some pounds, soaking wet. Uh, but I had to rely on my piccolo friends and I had to rely on the drum major to do their thing. I mean, I couldn't do that and not in a thousand years. Speaking of drum majors, we got my good friend Jared on here as well as Jordan. I'm going to start with Jared. Uh, he's the drum major down there at Southern University. Man, just tell me this. In the process of time, uh, how has your confidence grown uh, in being a student leader within the human jukebox? Well, uh, there are actually many ways that my confidence has grown because uh, <laughs> especially in my childhood, I was more so of a kid that would sit in the back of the classroom and really not say anything. Wow. But, uh, gotten older and especially uh, coming to the human jukebox where it's, a, it's really a family environment and it just makes you want to get out of your comfort zone and, and try new things. And that actually is what helped boost my confidence the most. Speaking of childhood, your director is on here from high school. Come on in here, Dr. Irvin. I want you to jump right in this conversation. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, I can tell you, uh, Jared has come a long way. You know, when I first met him, uh, when uh, Mr. Jared Walker was his director, he was a little quiet and everything. But when I took over as a director at Baker High School, Jared is honestly one of the best leaders I've ever had as a student because he knew how to, to, to negotiate with the students to make sure they got done what I needed to get done yes. with, and get done what they want to get done. So he did that with effortlessly. So it was a, definitely a seamless transition. And he's always been there to help and train those leaders that come behind him. So I've always told him that it, their legacy is not what they did while they were there, but actually what they left behind to come behind them. So that's that's great. That's so good, man. That's Proud so good. Me. Yeah, that's a huge compliment, Jared. <laughs> that's a huge compliment coming from uh, your former band director there. Also, Jordan, come on in here, man. Tell me, as the drum major for the Marching Cheese, just tell us, how's your confidence grown? I, I can definitely say that it has grown tremendously through the Marching Chiefs. There are so many student leadership opportunities through the Marching Chiefs that allow um, our student leaders to take charge of sectionals or um, teaching our rookies how to march. All of our marching maneuvers are taught by uh, a student leadership called row leaders. Um, I was a row leader. Just being able to teach a group of four rookies how to march helped me with my teaching skills and my communication skills um, in a way that uh, I, I couldn't imagine. And getting to get really close with these four members um, my sophomore year was extremely, extremely crucial. Just a, a lifelong uh, friendship for sure. Um, but getting to stand in front of 420 marching chiefs is truly an honor. Um, getting blasted with that sound and getting the opportunity to work through music and uh, rehearse that band is absolutely incredible. So it has helped build my confidence over the past two years for sure. Absolutely. Being in front of that uh, size of band, you just have to be ready. You know, you have to be ready. And uh, it's exciting to see. I can just hear it in your voice, uh, Jordan, how you enjoy every moment of that. And, and I love that. I love that you're soaking it all in. I'm going to go to my friend uh, Manuel, and then I'm going to go to my friend Caleb. Uh, I want to know from them, how's your confidence grown? You are also student leaders there in the Marching Chiefs, uh, also in the uh, Southern Human Jew Box. Just tell me, let's start with Manuel. Uh, there at Southern University, how's your confidence grown well first off it's no secret just like mr taylor mentioned that we do a lot of big events and so whenever you get on that stage that kind of a stage and you practice as much as we do you realize the things that you're capable of and that that's huge like whenever you realize what you can do as a group you know you realize what you can do as an individual and so you begin to put yourself out more, you know what you're capable of, you begin to, you get to know yourself better as a person. And that's very valuable, you know, in, you know, networking and things like that. It just, it, it, it very much helps. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the nature of it. You have to get out of your little comfort zone. You have to get out of your little bubble, meet some new people, network, you know, build a family, that sort of thing. Uh, I love it, man. That's so good. What about my friend Caleb? What about you? How have you grown in confidence? Well, I really appreciate something that Jordan touched on in terms of teaching experience. I kind of view Marching Chiefs from the lens of a practicum sort of perspective. As mm -hmm. a music education major, it gives me solid uh, experiences to lean on, to be able to lead ensembles and lead my section and rehearse them musically and make sure that we're ready and prepared 
in terms of our presentation to the entire band. Um, and I think that that has immensely helped my confidence. And I also have to admit that none of it's possible without the support of every student leader and also every student member of the Marching Chiefs. I think that's really important to understand that um, leadership from our perspective uh, as being a brother of KK Psy as well, um, it kind of teaches me to view leadership from a servant perspective inside of servant musicianship. And I think that um, taking everybody's and making sure that everyone's on the same page, making sure that their opinions are validated and just being able to lead uh, student leaders is, has helped me in my confidence from you know marching chiefs and band and to brotherhood as well. Absolutely. That's so good, Caleb. And I just want to lean on something you said. Number one, you said that you were a music major. Let me say on behalf of all the band directors on here and the band directors that are watching, thank you so much uh, for being a part and continuing the legacy of music education all the way across the board. And that goes for every single music major that's on watching now, maybe even watching later. We just want to say thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Bravo. And thank you uh, from all of us on here who are directors. We want you to know that we are so proud. Uh, keep, keep it going, man. Keep it going. You mentioned you mentioned, Caleb, uh, that it takes that servanthood, that servant leadership. That is so huge. If you know my friend, Dr. Tim, he's going to talk about servant leadership because it's true. I mean, nobody's going to follow you if you are a dictator, if you're dogmatic. Uh, they'll follow you for a season, but they really won't be invested in what you're invested in. Uh, so that's huge, Caleb, and I'm so glad uh, that you are leading in that way. I, I want to continue the conversation with my friend, uh, Carrington, and then we're going to go to my friend, Marcus, and I want to know, you know, there's a lot going on within your day as a college student. How do you make it all happen? How do you manage your day? How did you manage yourself, really, uh, to get everything done, to make sure you're ready uh, for every rehearsal, every performance, and every class that you're attending? So, Carrington, unmute, my friend. Tell me, how do you make this happen? I think for myself, the biggest thing is just to uh, prepare ahead of time. Um, like I said, we have a lot of practice time. We have to stay ready for class, um, extracurricular activities as well. So, we uh, for myself, I prepare ahead of time, make sure that I'm ahead of the game, uh, making sure that everything is met as far as practice and class. That's first, but definitely practice um, for sure, just to stay prepared. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're always prepared and ready to go, when the moment of opportunity knocks, you're ready to walk right in it. And, and that's huge. And as student leaders, you have to know how to walk through those moments of opportunity. Uh, Carrington, we're going to continue the conversation right on here with my friend, uh, Marcus. Just tell me, man, I know it's a lot. Time management, one on one. Uh, how do you make it all happen? Yes, I definitely agree with everything that Carrington said. And I want to even take it a step further. Um, it's a common ground within Chiefs and all of our ensembles here that when we ever, whenever we're working at Chiefs, this is our time for relaxation, our time to unwind, to de-stress from everything else that's going on in our school day. So whenever we're marching on the field, whenever we're rehearsing, whenever we're in the stands, we're always making, um, we're having a good time, making music, interacting with our friends. And it makes us remember that, you know, the whole reason why we're here, the whole reason that we do everything we do is because we love the activities that we do. We want to make a difference in what we're doing so that we can enjoy everything that else is going on. Because that this happens, we can allow ourselves to calm down and in that way have an enjoyable experience in the process. Absolutely. I think COVID-19 has taught us mm -hmm. how to appreciate exactly that, Marcus, how to appreciate what music does for us and being a part of that music making experience, how it helps us to relax as well as it keeps us focused uh, that we're in this together. Man, that's huge. That's so good. Come on, Dr. Irvin. I just want to say it's, it's real. It's real interesting to hear how you all manage your day. And as we move into leadership positions, when you go into the band room and you start your rehearsal, I, I really wonder how you manage some of the conflicts that you might have in, in within your section or within the program. So I'm very interested in hearing that. And I'm gonna start with Rebecca. Rebecca, I just wanna know how do you manage uh, some conflicts that you may have when working with the percussion section at Florida State? Um, I will say that I've worked with so many different types of people in my years with the marching chiefs. And it's very been dependent on the kinds of people and the kind of commitment that they wanna give to the chiefs itself. Um, there have been people that definitely haven't been team players and haven't really been cooperative in the past. And it's really just kind of learning and understanding and finding a way to communicate with everyone on their own level. Um, and being able to find a consensus that allows us to then move forward. Absolutely. Uh, Aeneas, I have the same question for you. Uh, how do you manage, uh, you know, some conflicts that may ar arise in the band program or in the Piccolo section at Southern University? 
Um, I think Re Rebecca said it best. You have to know the people in your section. Mm. And when you have all these different kind of personalities and perspectives, you know, blending in to have a like-minded goal, I think as a leader, it's important for you to keep in mind perspectives and to keep in mind how it affects everyone at the end of the day. And honestly, if everybody is on the same page, it shouldn't be that much conflict to begin with, but I just keep an open line of communication with everyone in my section so we can all just be on the same page at the end of the day. Oh, thank you for that. That's very important to do that. And so Connor, I'm coming to you next. And as you all definitely deal with the conflict in your sections or in the band program, it's important to include everybody in mm -hmm. what's going on in the program. So I, I just like to know, Connor, how do you intentionally include others, whether it be in your section or in the band program, as you all do things as a family in your program at Florida State? Well, I think that coming in as a rookie or a freshman, whatever, whichever it is, I think that people often come in kind of scared or feeling alone. And so it's good to have those student leaders to kind of lean on. Um, I think something I'm thankful as, as our staff manager is that I get to kind of talk to everybody and meet everybody mm -hmm. and kind of be there um, as that person. And like Caleb was talking about earlier, he's involved in KK Psy. I'm involved in Top Beta Sigma. Um, and I feel like engaging in things like that in NAFNI and just being in the College of Music has really helped me like get all these experiences and makes myself more available to the student leaders. Um, I've been told I'm a pretty friendly person, so I always try to um, check in on people and make sure they're doing okay um, and just include them the best I can. Oh, that's, that's, that's excellent. Go ahead, Cameron. No, that's so good. Connor, man, you reminded me something my grandmother used to say, and she would say, you can draw more people with honey than you can vinegar. And that goes along exactly what you're saying, Connor. You can bring more people in by just being friendly to them, being nice, showing kindness. And a lot of times when we get in a student leadership role, we feel like we got to be, you know, the meanest dog on the block. No, 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 no. If you know how to make sure everybody you're leading, they know that you care about them literally not what they do but who they are when they know that they give you the world and and 10 times more uh, they give you 150 percent and that's what you want you want that full commitment and that comes from them knowing how much you care about them my good friend Sarkino Walker is on here she's an outstanding band director uh, there in Georgia and I want her to come on in here uh, she has a couple of questions uh, to throw out on the table so we've listened to all these uh, great leaders and we've listened to great directors, but let's think about how did you get where you are? Mm. So my next question is, what do you do to reach out to those high school students to encourage them to become a part of your program? What are some of the things you do? Uh, Rebecca, can you start us off? Um, I actually feel like I'm in a really unique situation with this discussion. I'm an out-of-state student, so... Mm -hmm. Um, finding out about uh, programs like the Marching Chiefs was a really eye-opening experience. We don't have that this kind of involved band program back where I am back home. Um, and, and so social media has been such a help. That was such a turning point. Um, and I can imagine reaching out through these kinds of pro like events like this even like mm -hmm. um, are such a help in that sense. Absolutely. What would we do without social media, Rebecca? <laughs> we, <laughs> exactly. we have to rely on it. Hey, we're using it right now. We're definitely using it. I, I'd like to hear about the same question answered from one of our uh, directors. Uh, Mr. Taylor, if you want to answer that or if you want to send it to one of your staff members, I see all of your directors on staff and I want to say hello to everybody. Uh, but definitely you can introduce them as well. But what do you all do for outreach and pulling those high school students in uh, to be ready to come to Southern University for school and participate in the band program at Southern? Uh, Mr. Simmons, you want to chime in? I think I will. Can everybody? <laughs> <laughs> yes, hey, sir. Hey, Mr. Simmons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, um, to hit the point of what y'all just said, I know for sure I serve as the band director of Louisiana Leadership Institute, which is it's almost an after-school program uh, here in Baton Rouge, and we use that to reach out to all students, all high yeah. school. We have kids uh, in middle school who attend the program, some from third all the way to graduation and completion. And they go through that program and they just learn. They have, there's a choir, there's a basketball team, uh, but I do the band part. Mr. Taylor also um, works with us as well. He used to uh, be over the program as well. But what we like to do is every summer, even though we couldn't do it this summer due to COVID, we 
bring all the kids together, all of the students, I should say. We bring them together. We teach those uh, music and marching fundamentals. Also life lessons too. You gotta teach them about what out here in the real world and what's waiting for them. So we do that um, for about maybe two to three months. And then we hit the streets. We do a few uh, performances. Sometimes we do battle bands, sometimes we do parades. And right after that in Southern University normally has a high school band camp, uh, which is a week. And we let all the local high schools um, take that back, not local, let's go national, let's go global. We get them all in and they get a taste of what Southern University is for the week. But due to COVID, as everybody knows, we weren't able to do that this year. So what we like to do is we've been chiming in on some Zoom calls. Some of the high school band directors have been doing their classes and they've been trying to do little things just to keep the kids motivated because sometimes they're at home, sometimes they're at school. So what we do um, when we have free time or between periods of teaching, we log on, we'll join a class and we'll just speak to them. You know, let them know what Southern University is, let them know where they are now in high school, let them know that everything is important, but everything isn't as serious as they think it is. Um, and pretty much teach them how to push on, pretty much teach them how to keep going and hopefully they'll be where we are. So it's more important about being an example. And my dad always said, demonstration is better than conversation. So being in that, that place, being where they are, seeing our faces, seeing us, care, seeing that the Southern University band staff and students are going through the same things that they're going, but we're gonna work together to find our solution, ultimately brings everybody to work. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. That's that's great. And I, I'm sorry to cut you off, Cameron, but I just, I just wanted to make a point real quick that I talked to Mr. Taylor about earlier this week. You all have a unique thing, Mr. Simmons and Mr. Hart, Mr. Todd, Mr. Rose, and Mr. Taylor. You all all participated in that program. So you have a unique experience that you can always tell your students about uh, the importance of education, how things are on the yard, if you will, and the things that you learned uh, from Dr. Griggs and, and Mr. Jackson and uh, Mr. Knighton and the crew as, as you all were students. I will say this, Cameron, you talked about it earlier, social media is a game changer uh, right now. And we all know, and I think Dr. Flack is already shaking his head, you know, Southern University, you all have kind of changed the game in terms of marketing and uh, your brand, and as well as the social media thing, even to the point where right now, tonight, you know, your media team has already pushed this out to YouTube live. So, you know, we're, we're Facebook live and YouTube live right now. So if you want to speak on that real quick, uh, Mr. Taylor, about how you all use social media to bring those recruits in. Okay, uh, when I got hired in 2014, uh, I think our social media took off under Mr. Hamer, uh, when he was director of bands in 2014. Uh, uh, our director of uh, marketing and our director of our media team, Gary Eggerson, those guys, and they put this together. And I mean, they, they, I don't know, I can't even, I always ask him, I say, hey man, what you got next? Because you know, you've done so much. But uh, <laughs> you got so many followers on Facebook, Instagram, uh, in the many platforms that we do have, uh, you know, many people think, hey man, that's the, the best thing you can have, but man, that's a lot of work for these guys. Uh, I mean, they, they put in countless hours as it relates to, you know, we might do a show, the first game of the season, and people might watch it 50 times, and then so we get back to the next week, they're like, all right, what y'all got new? <laughs> <laughs> that's so right. Like, you know, we have to be prepared while the band on the field performing for halftime, we're, we're sitting there, we, we're not really enjoying it because we feel like, man, what are we going to do next? It's like, so it's always an ongoing thing, you know, because fans, you know, they don't realize uh, the time we in, you know, social media, you can see everything. It's almost like you can go live like we are right now at the performance. So people watching you live, you can't clean up no mistakes. So it's like, you know, you know, everybody was able to watch you live. So, I mean, it's a gift and a curse, but it's for sure a gift for uh, many people that may not have gotten the opportunity to watch social media. I know when I was coming up, I had one tape that I was able to watch from Southern University. And I can tell you that tape, when one thing go off, I can hear the pitch of the next song coming on. <laughs> That's how many times I watched it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I know it's, it's truly a, a blessing for this generation to have, uh, you know, because a, a lot of people not gifted the opportunity to come and see the band live. Absolutely. Never, nothing like it. Nothing like live. Like, like yeah. we don't have uh, 420, but we have about 270. But I mean, that 270, uh, it's a brassy sound, and I mean, it's really something to hear. And I, I love to hear that band live. Like, it's nothing like it in the band room. Most people don't get the privilege to hear the band in the band room, but that's where, man, you can feel everything. So when he said, blasting that sound on me, I have to wear earplugs to make sure that they don't blast me too bad. <laughs> but I we really enjoy it, you guys. I mean, uh, 
just having social media alone, mm. uh, it's the quickest way to put something out. Uh, do you want some information to get out quick? Uh, that's the way we, uh, we, we, we don't even use flyers or anything no more. We just put a flyer on social media and it, I mean, it reach out. Brother, you know, you save some money now. You know, it used to be a time you have to go past those flies on call. But now, you know, we have social media, and that's that's the beauty of it. And it definitely helps our program. Be, it it help have plenty of things that we, we have done over the years. We're doing, doing a, a competition. We can put it out there. And so it's one of the things that I love about uh, social media. And, I, you know, I wish people would share more often our win ensemble and our concert band and the different ensembles that we do have. Uh, you know, they do share the marching band a lot. A lot of people know about the Southern University marching band, but they don't know we have a lot of other programs that we do have because we have a very well comprehensive program at Southern University. So uh, we definitely appreciate our, everybody who follows us and we thank everyone that has been watching over the years. We truly, we are humble and we love it. I promise we do. We love oh, it. man. Now, Dr. Irvin, he, he mentioned the pressure of doing a performance and you got to come back the next time and the fans, they're, they're waiting for it. Uh, I do want to ask my dear friend, uh, Dr. Plack, I want to know from him uh, the same question that uh, my good friend Sarkino threw out there to us, and that is, how are you guys recruiting in, in this COVID-19 era uh, there at Florida State? What, what are some of the things you guys are using and taking advantage of in this season? Yeah, I, I, and and everything you know, my colleague said uh, applies. I mean, their their social media presence is something we aspire to. To be honest, I mean, they they what they do on social media is setting the bar. And I do want Dr. Wilson to to speak on this. Before I do that, just talking about recruiting, because I know we have some young young people here, and, and I always use this platform to give this advice. And if you are a young person and you look at Southern University and you say I want to be in the human jukebox or you look at Florida state and you say, I want to be in the marching chiefs. You deserve to be recruited like your peers that play football and basketball. And so let schools recruit you. They don't know what they don't know. And so my advice to you, if you're a young person is reach out to those schools that you're interested in and let them bring you to campus or let them bring you to a performance and let them recruit you. Uh, if it's, you want to, if you want to be a member of the LSU band, then contact, you know, my good friend Kelvin at, uh, at LSU and let them bring, you know, bring you in. Or if you want to be a, join the band at Florida A&M, then contact Dr. Chipman and say, I want to be. So my advice to you is, is be proactive on, on your own recruitment. You can't sit at home and wait for schools to contact you and say, come be a part of Southern University sometimes. Contact them and say, hey, I've always, since I picked up an instrument, I've always wanted to be in your band and let them bring you to campus and let them do that. So yeah, social media has changed the game. There's no question students that we might not normally reach are able to see this uh, and say, you know, those people at Florida State seem pretty nice. Uh, and that might bring some student interest to us and certainly the same for Southern University. So but Dr. Wilson, I know one of the things bringing him aboard uh, is this social media, you know, one of the things he's really going to, I think, help in this regard is just is just upping that social media game. So I don't know if he wants to uh, chime in on that topic as well. Uh, sure. Um, thank you for that. <clears throat> as he mentioned, yeah, we're going to, you know, we're pushing our, our level of social media. Um, and as said, you know, Southern is one of those bars that we look at all the time. Um, you know, we can look the same thing as, you know, Penn State or LSU, the things that they're doing that are just game changing. Um, and there's nothing wrong with uh, seeing what other people do when trying to make that happen. You know, that's, I guess, you know, a leadership's point uh, as well as a saxophone player or, uh, you know, when I'm soloing a lot with big Ben or with, with, with big bands, you know, when people ask me where I get my style from, I say, well, if you mimic one person, that's all you're going to sound like. But if you copy a little bit of Bird, you copy a little bit of Johnny Hodges, you copy a little bit of... Um, Coltrane or you know a little bit of Kenny Garrett and you put them all together you created your own beast um, that way but in order to do that you have to study and see what other people do um, so you know we're definitely working on that uh, a lot of things that we're doing too is we are in people's band rooms via zoom almost like religiously at this point so I mean I can I can tell you maybe three or four times a week we're in another band room uh, we're talking to students about what college is like uh, you know, with marching band, what, you know, how, how, how classes work. We've had some, some sessions where we had our student leaders, like we are here today that have joined us uh, in these sessions. So, you know, COVID's kind of put that twist to it, but on a regular year, which I would like to throw out quickly, you know, we're lucky because Florida is quite large and we have a lot of programs 
here. So our summer music camp is extremely big. Uh, we have thousands of kids on campus at a time uh, for seven week spans. So we have from middle school band, to high school band, to marching band leadership camp, to orchestra, to piano, to theory, to, you know, double reads, you name it. We literally pack out our college of music for seven weeks nonstop. So that helps. And we also have a tri-state festival, uh, which has been going on for several decades here at Florida State, uh, where we invite juniors and seniors. Uh, we get about 400 of them here. Uh, they're, you know, nominated through the directors. They have audition process. We bring in top-notch uh, conductors from the country. Uh, and we get them in to get that experience. It gives them the chance to get in our hallways and, you know, get a chance to work with our applied faculty and kind of, you know, just spark that interest and they get a chance to go to our PRISM concert. Uh, and I'll conclude with this. And our PRISM concert is two and a half hours of nonstop music. It's like a movie. So you come in, we turn off the lights and everywhere you look, soon as somebody's done, then somebody's up here, then somebody's back there, then somebody's on stage, somebody's rising up with smoke. And then we close it by bringing all 420 people in and we blow a hole right inside that uh, Ruby Diamond Auditorium. Um, and we leave them with that saying, hey, by the way, don't forget, this is Florida State. Uh, so, you know, we do our best to recruit as much as we can um, outside of that as well. So we do what we can. Absolutely. You're doing more than just what you can, my friend. I have seen the video of Lift Every Voice, and it has been shared over and over again. I want to say bravo to the entire team there at Florida State. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Had me singing, and I don't even sing. I don't do that. <laughs> so had me singing along with the band. Just so proud of, of what's going on and what's taking place. Speaking of these performances, I want my student leaders to, to shift the conversation this way. There'll be a lot of high school students that are watching this there'll be some middle school students that have watched this as well and we all deal with performance anxiety that stress that comes on us that anxiety that hits us when it's like okay it's showtime i want to talk to my drum majors at, at both institutions just kind of find out your secret sauce what do you do to help you manage that performance anxiety from one week to the next uh known uh as my friend uh professor taylor said the video camera can be going at any time with the social media so knowing that eyes are watching at all time i want to start with my friend and Jordan, just tell me, Jordan, you know, how do you handle that performance anxiety uh, from your perspective? Sure, Cameron. Um, so I'll start off by saying um, the performance anxiety is never managed. It's mm. suppressed. Um, and there are definitely ways that um, I take to, to suppress it as much as possible. I still get up there and nervous. A lot of people will see my hands shake a little bit when I'm conducting, but can, can you say that again, Jordan? Because I want all the high school students to hear that, that even when you're out there out front, there's some nerves involved. Say it again, brother. There, there are some nerves involved when you're standing you 420 people that are all staring <laughs> right at you to make sure you're doing everything correctly. Um, so, but some things that I take to, to calm myself down and to get myself focused are um, I really like to picture the entire performance uh, on my own. So I'll close my eyes and I'll go through it and I'll just think about what is it that I need to do here? What cue do I need to give to the trombones? Uh, where do the trumpets come in here? I'm listening to that music in my head um, on my own um, and uh, just basically walking myself through that performance. I'm preparing myself mentally for uh, that next step. That way when I get up on the podium, I, I know what to expect. I'm not just winging it. Um, and I think that's really for me what suppresses a lot of that anxiety um is just being prepared like um i can't remember who said it but being prepared is super important planning ahead. absolutely yeah. absolutely and you're using the power of imagination to walk through that experience so you already have the confidence to go into uh, exactly what may or may not happen you know you're just preparing for everything uh, as we mentioned before that's so good jordan jared what about you my friend uh you come out there as the only drum major you know all eyes on you what happens, man? How do you handle that uh, performance anxiety? Well, I think he hit the uh, the nail on the head. He said mental preparation. Mm -hmm. That's uh, to overcome the anxiety because you know you will be nervous. I think I don't think that's something that ever. But I think it's about just being confident in yourself and being confident in your skill set. You know, you have to understand that it's okay to practice in front of family and friends. And, you know, listen to criticism and critique things and, and just be confident in it and, and just focus and prepare yourself as much as possible. 
Absolutely. That's so good. Prepare yourself as much as possible. Let that confidence show. I'm going to my friend D'Amber and then to my friend Marcus. I just want to know, you know, once you have had the performance, now it's time for some feedback. How do you guys there at Southern University, how do you gain feedback on how was that performance? How did it go? What can we do to make it better? D'Amber, explain us uh, to us that process. How do you get the feedback? Well, honestly, with feedback, you got to go back to the YouTube video, one, to see how you did. <laughs> got to go back go. to the YouTube video. And, of course, you know, if if there was any tweaks that, that needed to be done, of course, the directors are telling you, like, hey, you know, this got to happen next time. But that's pretty much it. Like, you, you got to go back to the YouTube video for sure. Power of technology. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes it's a cringe, you know, oh, I messed up on that drill. I hope nobody saw me. And you see it. Like, yeah, everybody pointed you out. <laughs> you know, So uh, it's a part of it, but that's a part of life. And feedback is the breakfast of champions. That's what we always train our student leaders to know. You have to have that feedback in order to get stronger. Marcus, my friend, what about you guys? How do you gather that feedback at Florida State? Yeah, so a lot of our feedback kind of comes from a um, uh, majority of our student leaders and, of course, our directors are, um, themselves. Like, for example, a couple of days ago, we were rehearsing a new piece of music, and uh, Dr. Wilson was like, all right, I want you to give your all. And then we played through the piece of music, and he said, okay, be honest with me. How many of you guys gave your all? How many gave 100%? And it was only about maybe 20 people in the ensemble, and he's like, okay, this is the problem. We need to build this culture. We need to start figuring out why, um, why we're not meeting the standards. And so the next time we go through the piece, instantly better you just got to keep working towards those goals never forget where you're coming from that's so good that's marcus that is great go ahead doc hey sarah i'm coming to you now all right i i, I want to hear from you and especially about what you are most excited about this year what have you all done thus far at florida state and what do you have coming up that you're most excited about talk to us sarah so one thing i'm really excited about is this saturday our whole band gets to be in the stadium together. We've had to split in half, do Guardian Gold Band, but we're moving and we get to be all together and play all together and support that team. And that's a feeling we didn't really know we were gonna get and an experience we weren't really expecting to have all together. So that's really exciting. Anias, what are you most excited about this year? I'm, I'm interested in hearing what, you, what you're excited about. Oh, well, in the human jukebox, uh, we're not pretty much told about everything that we're going to be doing next. Uh, I feel like it's a way for the director to close. Um, but what I'm most excited about is most importantly how the season is going to look next semester. Uh, we started practicing and, you know, we look really good with the technique and the march and everything that's going on. So I'm just excited about everybody's pride, our potential, and just how we look together and how we're going to look next semester as a whole thing. Oh, it's not just Southern, man. It's all about the element of surprise, man. Directors don't want to give y'all everything. That's right. Trust, trust me, it's not just Southern. It's not just Southern. But I want to bring our good friend, Miss Dee Dee Pitts, in to ask a couple of questions as well. So, Dee Dee, uh, go ahead and take the mic for a little while. Thank you so much. This is such a great conversation. Thank you all for being here and taking part uh, in this with us. I am coming to my friend Caleb. Uh, first, and I want to talk about the high school perspective. I am, I live in a world of teaching a world where kids are expecting instant success and instant gratification. Can you talk to us a little bit about some some tips or some encouragement that you might give to some high school students who didn't get the position they tried for? They they wanted to be drum major, but they didn't quite make it. They wanted to be a section leader, they didn't quite make it. What can you do? What can you tell them to to keep them going on the path of leadership? In terms of leadership, in terms of positions, they are just that, positions. I think that uh, you should, one, for a high schooler, it's a little bit difficult to come to that realization. Some adults don't even come to that realization until much afterwards, after the fact, and then you have you know, the ability to look back and say, well, what is it that I really needed in the moment? So speaking from personal experience, I mean, there are a lot of positions that I didn't get in high school that I thought I needed, but I realized I was where I needed to be the entire time. And there are certain things that you can learn from being denied something, I think, mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it kind of builds maturity and it builds patience in you. And that those key elements of being denied things, they have to happen. And that builds you to the point where you're able to take over a position uh, over some sort of, you know, responsibility over others. And I think mm -hmm. even in college, it happens all the time. <laughs> but I think that patience and that willing to build maturity over time is more of a reward than the instant gratification of getting that position in the moment. 
Oh, that's so huge. That's so huge. The patience, the patience piece with high schoolers is, is something that we are yet striving towards building. That is so huge. I want to come to come to my friend um, D. Amber over at Southern. Tell me, tell me some things that you would tell a uh, a high schooler who is just just discouraged and they haven't gotten where they want to be. Honestly, I would tell them to one never give up because these positions or any are just leading up to what you would do later on in life that's all it is. everything is building up to your life journey right and mm -hmm. so that's what i would tell them to honestly stay strong always you know lead in any type of way because it will pay off in the end that's fantastic that is fantastic that you don't need a position to lead you can lead without a position. I think that's so important that a lot of a lot of young students think that you have to have the title to do the to do the work. Not mm -hmm. so it, that's really important. I hope my high school kids are, are tuning in and listening to what that was awesome. Thank y'all. Yes, I, I, I'll say thank you, Didi. I, I'll say this as well. I hope the directors, uh, Mr. Taylor and, and, and uh, Dr. Plack, you're listening to the, the wonderful words and wisdom that your that your students are offering to everybody uh, live and in this room tonight. They, you, you've really done a great job. So much so, I think Zachary Harris, our good friend and, and leader, uh, has something to ask you all about how y'all make that happen. Thank you, uh, William. Guys, I'm sitting here and I'm just in amazement of how well these student leaders are presenting your programs. And it, it, for somebody that has taught for 35 years, it makes me n sit here and say, this is why I'm still doing it. This is why I'm, I'm doing it because I see the leadership that's being developed here. But to, the question I have is for the directors. Um, we'll start with Dr. Plack. Uh, what type of, of um, of student uh, camps or a student leadership seminars or, or things like that that you all do to kind of help prepare your, your student leaders? Well, to be honest, uh, you know, I, I think you, for one, I think both, both at Southern and at Florida State is we're blessed with having a culture already in place. Uh, you can see with Florida State football right now, they're rebuilding the culture and mm -hmm. culture is huge I, right now. You know, that, that, that's a rebuilding of culture. We have a good culture in the Marching Chiefs. And we, you know, our position is cultures create leaders, leaders create culture. And so as long as, long as you can maintain and build that culture, uh, leadership will grow from it. But we do, you know, we have, uh, we have a leadership retreat over the summer that will just kind of uh, set the season ahead. Of course, this last summer, it was very different because there were so many unknown questions but in a, in a normal year, you know, we'd have a leadership uh, retreat uh, in the middle of the summer. We'd set up the year. Here's where we're traveling. Here's what we're going to be facing. Here's the schedule. Uh, we'll talk about anti-hazing. That's a huge, huge issue in the band world. Uh, and so we really look and make sure that, that we're doing everything we can to make all of our new members feel safe and welcome. We want every single person, whether they come from the Black community, the LGBTQ community, any community that comes to the Florida State Marching Chiefs, we want them to feel safe and welcome. And so it, so making sure our leaders feel the same way is, is paramount. Uh, and other than that, we're just blessed with really, really smart, smart people uh, that, that love band, they love each other, they love, you know, they, they love what they do. And when you can have that culture, I think you'll find that leadership kind of falls into place. Uh, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, Cameron Jenkins is a former student of mine. And, and when I first met him in the fifth grade, when I was going over to recruit fifth grade students to kind of get them in, involved in the band program, he stood out amongst those other students. And, and you can instantly see that he was going to be that type of student leader. I even tried to convince him to be my drum major and he turned me down. Uh, because he did not want to leave his tuba section. That's right. I'm going to play that sousaphone, brother. <laughs> he did not want to leave it. <laughs> and so you can see that you can see that leadership, the student leadership uh, instantly in, in a lot of them. Uh, Mr. Taylor, what do you all do to, uh, what type of programs and training do you all have? 
man, Dr. Plack, you hit it on the head. Uh, culture for us is huge. Uh, our culture at Southern University, I mean, we didn't have to come and invent anything. It was already in place uh, mm. for many years. Uh, it, and it's almost not like now, it's like a Cadillac. Cadillac been around for a lot of years and I always use Cadillac because it's one of those cars that, you know, I remember my dad, when we got a Cadillac back in the day, we thought we were doing something. <laughs> but it's one of those cars that has evolved over the years because, uh, like I said, that's what the Southern University band is. Uh, we just adding creativity to it. So what we do for to help our leaders, we do have seminars for our uh, section leaders before they actually take on the role of the position. The entire staff put the, together a presentation to, you know, give them and put them in situations to where they're actually going to lead. And we say, okay, get this person to show us how you're going to teach them how to march or get this person right here to show us how you're going to get them to do this. And we teach them life learning skills throughout the year. Uh, we have so many quotes that we passed down from uh, the legendary Dr. Isaac Griggs. Um, you know, we, we definitely, we put those things in the, into those students and they, and you know, sometimes they wonder what we're saying, but because we used to wonder the same thing uh, that when he said, he was always said so fast, the tallest bill would come down to not rid on solid ground. We're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so he was saying so fast, but he would make you listen to him. That was the lesson in that. So you, for, so you was like, the next time he said, I'm going to hear what he said. Because he ain't going to tell you what he said. Slow down. He making you listen. So that's a, a big thing for us as people. We have to learn how to listen. So we have to, we tell the students all the time, like, listen, you got to learn how to listen to what is going on, what's being said. Because uh, as band directors, uh, you know, I was one of those people that tried to suck up everything I could soak up, right? So as, as the directors on the podium, I, I always say we're, we're teaching lessons, life learned lessons, as we are teaching the music. Because Music is the art of feeling, is what you feel. So therefore, we're teaching you how you can feel yourself in the music, put yourself in the music. I can remember one time, we were, I was at a concert band festival uh, and, I, and I was adjudicating and, uh, and you know, they told the band, they said, hey, listen, I want you guys to put yourself in the music. And man, some of the kids were crying when they finished because you know they said, whatever you're feeling on the inside, I want you to put it in that music. Right. So just showing students how you can cope with things in life through music. I was like, man, when I'm feeling down and stuff, I just get my keyboard and start playing. So those things are some of the things we implement and we definitely go over hazing. Um, you know, we've had incidents over the years where stuff happens. We do not condone hazing at Southern University. So we have uh, seminars where we have hazing and we have the chief of uh, police come in of the city. So, you know, that's pretty big for the students to see the chief come in and, you know, take his time out to let the students know, hey, look, guys, these are the rules. If you break the rules, this is what happens. So just putting that on, I was like, look, we're in college. We're in Southern University of Bend. None of us are thugs, okay? <laughs> we are in college. So therefore, nobody want to go to jail for saying they did something crazy like that. So it's, it, we, you showed them the importance of how one decision can mess up your entire life, right? So we definitely put those things in place, but we have, we definitely make, the, in a family oriented environment where everyone can have fun and be themselves. And students come to us very shy, but by their senior year, they're like, man, they're a whole new person. So we know that the things that we're doing and, and have in place are really working. So we haven't changed anything uh, that's been going on for years, guys. We just continue to add things in to be creative. And that's the, and that's the culture that we live in, you know? So it, the people are drawn to it based on, they like, man, they look like they're having fun. So that's what it is. We're definitely having fun. So but in the process, we're definitely making musicians and men and molding them to be life learning learners when they leave Southern University so they can send more students that we put out. So you get what you put out. You know, and as I always say, whatever you put in, that's what you're going to get out. So that's what we do here at Southern University. All right. That, that, that's awesome. Yeah. You, you know, you, you look on here and you see the student leaders and, and guys, to be honest with you, you're not just student leaders, but you, you are their assistants. I mean, you you have to help run those programs for the uh, for them, and some sometimes they may be have, having to put out fires and stuff like that. And if they have strong leadership, where the program continues to grow uh, and move forward, then that is so so important. So I commend you on on the, the the responsibilities you've been given, and I also commend you on how well you are handling those responsibilities. You know, being a product of an HBCU. You learn so many life learned skills 
Uh, I, I was at Little Tremel at Valley. He taught me so much about what not to do as well as well as what to do. And you learn those skills. So thank you so much. Thank you, Zach. Uh, Cameron, before we go to, to get into the, the closing remarks from some of our students and our directors, I wanted to give Didi Pitts an opportunity to ask some of the questions uh, that we've uh, been submitted on Facebook Live. We've got a couple of questions, a couple of few questions, and I'll start. This is for the directors. Um, they are asking in the chat, if you are rehearsing in person, what have your programs been doing to implement the CDC guidelines? And what have been some of your successes and some of your pitfalls in implementation? I'll, I'll, I'll start with uh, Dr. Plack. How about that? Well, actually, I'll, let me let my colleague, Dr. Wilson, answer that. I'd just give him a chance to, to chime in on this. He's been, he's been very helpful in this regard. So I'll let him chime in on this one. Thank Perfect. you. Um, we are doing the best we can. Uh, we have uh, several masks uh, that we have been through. Um, at first, we had it uh, to where the students had to provide at least two masks. You had a mask that had some type of hole uh, in it, then one to cover it when we're not. Um, you know, playing, uh, then we were able to get a design mask that was our kind of like we call it version one. <laughs> so we still had that one, but we still had to have another layer underneath. Uh, we have a new one now that actually has two layers on it. So we just kind of lift it up, put it down. Um, that bell covers, we keep everything at least four steps apart while we're on the field. So that's past six feet um, and some change. Uh, we keep our trombones nine feet uh, away uh, because they're this, a different distance than everybody else. Uh, so what that does kind of call sometimes to put 370 people on the field is we, we honestly have phasing issues in rehearsal uh, that we just have to accept uh, because there's no way either we put it well, originally we had the trombones way in the back that is just you know it's, it's physics it's only gonna, it, they're going to take a little bit to get to us um, but we uh, make sure the students are socially distant so where they uh, where they sit during their before rehearsal, when we take breaks, that's all organized. They even like on the bench that we have our uh, flutes and piccolos, they have their names like written, like you sit here uh, mm -hmm. kind of deal. But we do our best, uh, not just with the marching band, but even our concert ensembles here at Florida State. Uh, we, we have six feet distance in between these chairs. We rehearse for 30 minutes. We get out so the air can refresh itself. And then we kind of come back in. Uh, so we're doing everything we can. I mean, there's hand sanitizer everywhere. There's entrance ways. You walk in this way, you walk out that way. Health checks at doors. Um, you know, everything we're doing, uh, uh, we're doing, we're doing the best we can. And we've been lucky so far, like you said, with 370 people, uh, you know, fingers crossed, you know, we haven't had any major issues. So uh, we're, we're, we're kind of doing what we can, but we're just trying to just be as safe as possible. That's awesome. You, I think you're doing more than what you can. Y'all are doing everything everything possible to keep the students safe. Uh, Professor Professor Taylor, if you or one of your staff would like to handle that question as well. I'm gonna let Mr. Todd answer that question. Perfect. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, hey, so things that we've been doing, uh, one thing we've been doing, we'll be keeping our groups separate. Uh, we break our freshman group into two different groups. Um, so we have a group that comes at four and we have a group that comes at six. Uh, we do the same thing with our upperclassmen group. We keep them separate as well. So having about 40 to 50 in each ensemble, it, it allows for more spacing and there's keeping them uh, more socially distanced. Um, we don't allow them to come, you know, to try to intertwine with each other. And we make sure that one group leave, leaves out the back while the other is coming in the front. Um, when we're outside on the field, we're keeping everybody um, spaced out. Um, we, we only have two people per squad. So that way, you know, they can stay equally distanced and that way um, we make sure everyone has their mask on. You know, they may get a little tired and it may, you know, it's, it's a, little, a little humid down here in Louisiana, but um, things still uh, seem to work out pretty well. So it's, we've been very blessed, I say, to have um, no issues because of that. And um, we're gonna continue, you know, to go as, as needed until we can just get past the situation. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Just doing everything we to keep the, the staff and the students safe is important. So I hope that answered your question, uh, Ms. Sybil. Okay, had another one. Uh, this is as far as student leaders, and I'll come, uh, I'll come to Manuel first. Uh, can you tell me, how do you hold your peers accountable, both musically and academically? Okay, so oftentimes, at least academically, um, 
and not to toot my own horn, but I, I, I have a 4.0 GPA and, <laughs> and so I'm sorry, give me a second. So when I, I like to make sure that not only I'm, that I'm straight, but you know, that I'm taken care of, but you know, we, all my friends, you know, I care about them too. So I'll ask them, hey, look, man, how are you doing in your classes and stuff like that? And if I know they're not doing too good, you know, I'll send them a text. Like if I know they're not doing anything, they'll be like, hey, man, you studying? Do you need a study partner? Do you need tutoring? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I make sure that they're, they're, they're staying on top of it as much as, as I am. And it, it really helps them. And, you know, I feel like that helps us, you know, come get a bond you know you know what i mean and um in terms of the band you know um i'm always making sure that everybody is also straight in that regard you know i'm looking down the line i'm I'm making sure that everybody knows this stuff i might come around i might uh you know people in practice rooms they're they're practicing i'll say hold on you know if i don't hear something that is quite in style like if we're playing a march i'll say hey uh i'll come in the practice room uh, or the classroom, because that's that's something uh, we're also doing, because, you know, it's more spacing. I'll say, hey, look, man, uh, play that one more time. And I'll be like, I'll say, OK. And, you know, I might it might have been a fluke. But then when it is something, you know, worth fixing, I'll say, hey, look, man, try this instead of this. Or it might be on the practice field, uh, you know, pick your legs up a little bit more, angle, angle your, your um, point your toes and make sure that you're you're doing the um, toe heel technique that uh, for for marching, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much accountability. That's awesome. That that is super awesome. Sarah, would you mind chiming in on how you help hold your peers accountable? Sure. So, especially during this time, I think it's really important to hold treat everyone with kindness more than you ever would. And just a simple, like, how are you doing? Um, how can I help? It goes a really long way. And everyone's going through their own thing, especially now. Things are always stressful. If you're not comfortable, if you're not doing well, if you're not feeling well, like having someone there for you and knowing that your student leaders, your section mates are people that you can lean on, your directors are people that you can really lean on is a really nice feeling. And it's something that the marketing chief has definitely provided me, just a support system. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So just making sure that you're not leading all the way from the front. You got to make sure that you got somebody behind you and that not only that they're behind you, but you're pushing them forward and, and providing them that support. That's awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing. And here's our final question. Uh, from the Facebook chat. Uh, this goes to the directors. Uh, the question is, how are how are you using music to address the current social climate? And I will start with my friends uh, at Southern University. If you will, any of the staff, if you want to chime, chime in on how are you using music to address the social climate of today? Okay, I guess I'll, I'll answer that. Well, uh, definitely, uh, we all are one. Uh, we always play the song, We Are One. Uh, and using music, uh, it always brings us together. Uh, there's nothing like music. Uh, like I said earlier, it's the art of feeling. It's something that we feel. And, and I, was just, I was listening to the Florida State play, Lift Every Voice. And, you know, just, just hearing the sounds and just kind of just took me away from what I was doing at the time. Because uh, just like I said, man, when I hear that music, it, it, it brings a different vibe. So that's something what uh, people have been asking us, like, man, what the, the human jukebox is going to do? Because everybody, you know, want to hear that band to get that feeling in the community, right? Everybody want to hear that band. And right now, we're not uh, doing anything because, you know, we don't want to put in our students at risk uh, on campus because we were leading the nation in Louisiana. So we were trying to, you know, make sure that we take the precaution to make sure that our students are, are well taken care of. But what we're doing right now, we're, we're playing little things in, uh, in class, like Mr. Todd explained. We have a band class and we have it split. So we're working on little things now that we can't work towards doing something to bring everybody together. Uh, even if it's not, if we just in the stadium playing and everybody in their cars, uh, you know, just to do something to bring all our community together to, to bring everybody 
in this time, you know, it's a crazy time. Um, I, I feel like, you know, as a person, uh, I was raised from my parents and we were brought up in the church and we, you know, uh, we don't see color, we don't see uh, religion, we don't see uh, gender or anything like that. You know, we see uh, everyone as, as individuals that God made, we all are God's children. So uh, just being able to relate that through, through music, uh, you know, it means more to me than anything. Uh, and I always tell the students, uh, we want to be able to perform to a level that we can play anywhere, right? We, we can go anywhere and play. No matter where we go, we will always be who we are. And uh, we went to California and we were at Southern University and it stood out. It brought everybody in California to know who Southern University was at the time because we did not deviate from who we are. And just being who you are and sharing that with everyone, I think that's what we all have to do. We all were made different. Everybody have a purpose. Everybody have a gift. Everybody have a talent. That's what make our staff so unique. Every last one of us are different. But at the end of the day, that music brings us all together. I, I always tell them, hey, man, what you, you did on that song, man? That was nice. Mr. Todd, do something on the song. And, you know, and tell Mr. Hart, say, man, the drum section, man, that was a nice beat. We, we, we all have different gifts. So being able to share that gift with everyone else, we put all our talents together, the God-given talent that he gave us to, to bless the world with it. And I, I feel like uh, right now we need it more than anything because, you know, we, we are, they're trying to divide us, but they can't do it because as, as, as colleagues, we stick together, right? We, we all say, we speak in the same language. And, and what makes us speak that same language? Music, there is nothing like it. That's huge. That is so huge. I, I love it. That music bringing us all together. That's huge. Dr. Plack, uh, would you like to address that question, you or someone on your staff? Well, yeah, I mean, if, if Dr. Wilson wants to chime in after, but I think, you know, Professor Taylor said it perfectly. I mean, look at this panel. I mean, I feel like I feel like I've known some of you for, you know, years. Manuel, Cameron, Professor Taylor, and this has been one hour, and it's band that binds us. And I feel like I have 16 new friends just in this discussion alone because it's band that brings us together. And so whether it's singing our alma mater or our hymn at Florida State and you're, you're hugging, well, not right now you're hugging, but you're, right, you're, right. you're you know, it's, it, that's it. I mean, you know, it, it, we don't, music does not divide like he, like, like he said. I mean, it, it brings us together. And, and I will say, you know, we, uh, the, the lift every voice that uh, Dr. Wilson arranged for us uh, was incredibly moving to us. Now we we did it as part of as part of a baseball show, and we we did a baseball show and recognized the hundredth anniversary of the Negro Baseball Leagues, and and that was our way of doing this. And when we performed that at our last game, just looking at the state, not everybody knows what that song is. And not, a, not everybody may know what that song means to some, but to look out and he and I talked and to see some individuals stand and sing, I, I, it, it blew me away. And that's the power of music. And again, they can try to divide us all they want and they can try to, you know, tear, tear certain groups down, but it's not going to happen in band rooms and it's not going to happen in the band world. It's just not. I will cheer for Southern University every damn day, uh, but it's it's that's that's why we're here. Look at us, 16, 17, 20 people from different backgrounds talking about one unified message. And thank you for making that possible, Dr. Wilson. Do you want to add anything or? You just preach, my brother. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we could pass the collision plate after that one, Dr. Plank. I mean, <laughs> now it means a lot. And again, so I. This would not be possible without reach reach through music and with you allowing us to share this stage with with you know southern university i, I think this is i think this is phenomenal i really do thank you so much well cameron we have had a a great night a great night and i know we've gone over time but we had so much to get in and i really appreciate uh the words of wisdom that everybody has shared tonight so cameron if you want to close us out uh, i think that's a good high note to kind of close out on but if you can give us some more information and I'll leave you with some uh, tidbits about the conference and stuff later. 
Well, Dr. Irvin, uh, as a pastor uh, and as a band director, I know not to say too much after the evangelist is preached, so I am going to <laughs> yield the floor. Listen, I am so thankful for every single person on this call. I have gained an even larger band family uh, as a result of this call tonight. Uh, Dr. Plack has mentioned culture. Professor Taylor has mentioned culture. I would say this, uh, training student leaders is something I absolutely love doing. And I teach every single student leader that culture is not what you say, it's not what you write in a program. It's not even what you chant after you bring the band to attention at the end of the night. It's what you allow. And so if your culture allows something that's contradicting what you really want it to be, then change it. Uh, don't allow anybody to beat down another bandsman no matter what, who they are and what position they hold. If you're not building somebody up, then you need to be silent. Uh, so make sure that that culture continues and remains. And I love that, that culture creates leaders and those leaders create even greater culture. And so I love that. That's a great conversation uh, that I've stole. I wrote it down. And so I'm going to take that uh, as my takeaway for tonight. To all of the student leaders, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for who you are. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for being amazing young men, young women. Thank you so much. And also to the band directors thank you so much for the investments you have made in your students we've heard it i mean they're listening <laughs> that's what you can take away for sure is that they're listening so kudos all the way around dr urban i'm going to step out of the way so you can uh, land a plane for us tonight hey just make sure you go to our reach through music facebook page and go to reach through music.com to check out what's going on with our reach through music virtual conference on november 14th those tickets go on sale tonight and uh, you can check out our facebook page later on tonight as we will uh premier Zach survival hack for Zachary Harris will be sharing with the world some of the things he's learned throughout his 35 years of, of teaching uh, music. So we look forward uh, to, to hearing from Zach in just a second. We're going to premiere that right now. And uh, listen, go to Facebook music, uh, Facebook to see uh, Reese through music's page and make sure you like it, subscribe, uh, and make sure you come back and join us on October the 26th, when we will have the LSU golden band from Tiger land and the Florida a and Marching 100. So we look forward to seeing everybody then. Take it away, Cameron. And after this video, we'll be off of Facebook Live. You all stay on for it. Yeah, one, right. one thing to say. OK, yeah, hold on. Mind. No problem at all, Mr. I got Bass. the camera. I, I can. You go, go, go ahead. I just wanted to uh, also offer you guys uh, uh, for being, on, uh, being with us tonight. Um, the two schools, if you go to devmusiconline.com, if you see an arrangement or composition you like, uh, uh, send us an email uh, at ordersonline.com and we'll send you a free chart uh, for, for you, you to be on tonight. We're just so happy. I, I am full, excuse me for, for uh, chopping my words, but I'm really emotional at this moment because these two schools coming together and seeing Dr. Chandler here, it's, it's, this is just an amazing night. Um, and so I just want to tell you how happy and how thrilled I am for you guys to be with us. Thank you so much, Mr. Chabaz, yeah. who has given us the platform to do this uh, with Dev Music. So definitely visit Dev Music online as well, uh, Dr. Plack and uh, Professor uh, Taylor to see what you all can, uh, to, can, can where well, we can help you all from Dev Music. Dr. Irvin, before we go, I want yeah. to just say before we go, uh, I know our time is well spent, but I just want to say, man, we really thank you all for the opportunity for giving us uh, this time to come on here to share what we've been doing and let our student leaders get opportunity to have a platform to say what they actually do at Southern University. Uh, it means a lot to me and the Southern University family. And you guys doing a great thing here, uh, just networking with uh, all of the directors and bringing everyone together. Because you know, without a platform like this, we wouldn't have the opportunity to share with one another to, to know how people really are. Because you never know. You can't just go approach anybody and say, hey, you know, but this has given us a platform to be able to say, look, we can reach out and, and collaborate on things to make everybody program better, to share ideas and share goals and visions of what you know it is that we do with, with our programs to help all of the students learn so everybody grow. And that's the whole thing that brings us together. So I just want to thank you guys again for giving us the opportunity to have this platform. And we really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. All of you and your staff are definitely family. And of course, when, we, when Mr. Shabazz and I saw you all out in California representing the world well, we just want to make sure that we continue that relationship that we have with Southern University and now with Florida State University, uh, as well as all the other schools that have, who have participated in this webinar series. So thank you, Mr. Taylor, for everything you have done as well. All right, Cameron, let's let's see some Zach survival hacks. <laughs> Hello, everyone.
everyone, and welcome to Zach's Survival Hacks. With COVID-19 going on, developing a positive relationship with your administrator is very important. You can help by keeping them informed with the research and studies pertaining to aerosol and droplets in the air. Your administrators are very busy trying to keep the doors open and everyone safe. So this will be a great opportunity for you to partner with them and suggest the recommendations for the studies pertaining to the arts. Some of the helpful suggestions would be the six feet spacing in the band room or in the classroom, as well as at the, at the practice field. Also, um, wearing the mask while playing your instrument and singing, and using bell covers to help uh, keep the droplets from spreading. This is a great opportunity for you to connect with your administrator. Thank you for signing in on our Facebook page and have a great day. All right, folks, we are signing off of Facebook Live at this time. We're going to ask our panelists to stay on. Everybody wave and say bye to everybody on Facebook Live and YouTube Live.